Hey Jules Bliss Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So happy Sunday everybody. It is very windy in the high desert and I am so sorry for all those fires in California. I think the only way I can comfort you guys is to remind you that climate change is fake. Fake news. <laughs> I have family in Northern California, I have family in Southern California, and as they're being evacuated yet again, they're just like, are you kidding me that people are saying climate change is still fake? Are you kidding me? How fake is it that I'm being, you know, forced to leave my home again, that my friends' places are being burned to the ground? that it's only been one year. It used to be major fires were years apart, right? Um, grow, you know, I, it's, it's just tragic. But anyway, I'm praying for all my Southern California friends. God bless you and be safe. So I wanted to give a talk on what's called Carnism, C-A-R-N-I-S-M, which was coined by Dr. Melanie Joy, uh, back in 2001, and she actually wasn't even a doctor yet, I don't think. She may have had, yeah, she probably did have her um, doctorate by then. She's a psychologist. But she did a fantastic video on called The Secret Reason We Eat Meat. And I'm going to, of course, include that in the description of the video. And you know, you may already be a person who's vegan. You may be a person who hasn't eaten meat for years and and that you're never tempted by it either. Um, but as disgusting as it is and how I realize now that it's absolutely a dead animal on a plate, I wasn't very long ago that I was eating meat. And I really have to continuously inform myself because I still have a mind that'll say, can't be that bad or, well, it's just a little bit of dead animal. <laughs> I didn't use to use dead animal, but I remember just not even, I, I mean, a year ago, I think I said, you know, biblically people can eat meat. So as long as you allow the animal to free range and be happy right up until they're slaughtered to death. And I remember a person called me on it and said, really? What logic is that? You do get that you're killing animals, right? And I was like, what's his problem? Oops. But you know what? That's okay. It was all the baby steps God needed me to experience to get to where I'm going. And I appreciate that. So this is a really good one. It's about 14 minutes long, but if you'll take the time, if you're someone who still needs conviction on why not to eat animals or understanding that once again, like the standard American diet, like the corrupt uh, government and um, scientists that are, who are making food even more hyper, um, what is that called? It's for sure hyper addictive, but there's a word. Um, I'll think of it. Anyway, uh, if you're like one of those people who still needs affirmations for yourself and for others, please take a moment. All right. So anyway, as I suggested, um, this is called The Secret Reason That We Eat Meat by Melanie Joy. And this was in 2017. And she starts out by saying, have you ever wondered why we eat chicken wings instead of swan's wings? And maybe why we eat something like a cow's heart instead of a dog's heart. And she gives a bunch of great examples. But really what she's saying is we've been programmed to decide which is acceptable and which isn't. And she actually gives this story where she said that um, she's eating something totally delicious and she asks the chef, how in the world did you make this so incredible? And the chef says, the secret is all in the meat. It's all about how you spice the meat. And really what you need is three pounds of golden retriever. Of course, the person lost their mind because in our society, Golden Retriever is a sacred pet in a home, but in other communities, not so much. So um, it says, uh, why are some animals more acceptable than others? Her personal story was that she got very sick eating bacteria and infected meat. And after that, she only saw meat as body parts, like everywhere she looked. 
In the store, she saw all animal pieces of meat. When people were eating, she just saw body parts. She was like so over it because she almost died. Let's be fair. So um, we've been conditioned to believe that we need to eat meat, but we do not need to eat meat. Of course not. And because they've conditioned us over time, we didn't actually give a conscious consent to being people who eat meat. And, and she shows this cartoon and the whole thing's done in that quick draw cartoon method of a little baby, you know, sucking its bottle with meat. Because, you know, we give our little babies uh, baby food, which of course is mushed up meat, right? So there's this belief system that we've received that unfortunately, because we're born into the belief system, there's not a conscious choice per se. So there's carnyism, which is something, she, again, she coined herself is referred to as the invisible belief system that conditions us to eat certain animals, certain animals, um, because other cultures don't eat the same animals that we do. So it says that every culture varies, but all of them have come to rationalize why their animals are acceptable and why other cultures animals are not so cultures it that eat horses two decades sorry. later after i had changes seriously from culture to culture oh actually this is god telling us exactly what she said hold on <laughs> he is so funny he came on accidentally but it's exactly what i was talking about let's see we classify only a tiny handful of animals out of millions of possible species as edible all the rest are classified as inedible and disgusting. So even though the type of species consumed changes from culture to culture, members of all cultures tend to find their own choices to be rational and the choices of other cultures to be disgusting and often even offensive. Of course. Carnism is like a vast fog. That's so interesting. Yeah. So she's saying like some of them say, no way can you eat a horse. No way can you eat a dog. No way can you eat a cow. Zero way that they'll eat a pig. Like these are all value systems. But the other animals are a go, you know. I think in America and, and even some Asian countries, uh, almost as a challenge, we've gotten crazy uh, to what we're willing to eat. And um, it can still offend others, but... How about people who eat animal? I mean, eat people, which of course they've always done as well. Ah, it's just, just so sad, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So what's really important is to come to understand that the way that the carnism and the meat industry has gotten away with this for so long is because they stay on the defensive all the time and they hide the truth. First in denial. Have you ever interrupted someone and said, Ew, don't tell me that story. You're going to ruin my meal. Yeah, my intention was to ruin your meal. <laughs> but they're not going to stop eating it. They just don't want to hear your story. Um, so the meat industry stays on the defensive and, of course, threatens people. Uh, but the greatest way that they keep us in denial is to keep the system invisible. Super invisible. Um, by keeping, in essence, the victims, the animals that are being killed, out of sight. They keep them out of sight. And proof of them keeping them out of sight is that even in 2017, and of course it's more today, 124,000, say that again, 124,000 animals, farm animals, were slaughtered every minute, every single minute. 124,000. And in fact, seven minutes into the video, she reminds us by saying we're at 868,000, you know, slaughtered animals at this point. But in knowing that 124,000 are slaughtered every minute, have you even seen 124,000 animals in your life? S certainly not me. I think when you drive up the five um, in California, between uh, Central and Northern California, you can see a dairy slaughter place and it reeks for miles. And maybe you would see, I don't know, 5,000 cows maybe? 124,000 slaughtered every minute. So it says, of course, the injustice of this is that they've 
intentionally told us which animals are worthy of love, which animals are proper to have as a pet, and which animals are just absolutely a waste and only should be used for food without telling us not only that are they sentient beings, but that pigs are equivalent to a three-year-old and can even play video games, that cows are have formed such deep bonds with one another that they literally cry for weeks when their babies are taken from them, that chickens can recognize a hundred faces of little chickens in their population and make over 30 specific warning signal sounds for one another, that even fish and crustaceans, and this is no surprise to me as a God person, but that even fish and crustaceans have intelligence and pain receptors, and that in some countries now, with understanding, it is illegal to keep a fish limited to a small bowl, and that it is illegal to boil lobsters alive. Gotta love that. But the farmers uh, continued to tell us in trying to reestablish the few who have dared to leave their ranks that um, grass-fed animals are, are raised in caring environments and are happier to be killed for food consumption, right? <laughs> and I was so happy. And again, this was my lack of knowledge. They had that huge Happy Cows campaign in California. Super funny. You know, um, these cows talking to each other and just kicking it on the field and, and so joyful and hilarious as if cows were happy to give their milk and be tortured and have babies taken away and be impregnated year round. And they finally got rid of the Happy Cows campaign, which I appreciated. Uh, so now they're trying to tell us that as long as it's grass fed, they'll be happy to give their life for you to eat. And she was saying the importance of not wanting um, you know, that if you had a dog and you said, may I please kill your dog because I love the taste of their leg, like I prefer to eat a leg over a breast, right? Uh, you probably wouldn't do it. But when we say, oh, the legs are the best, or I prefer dark meat, or I only like the breast, why do we even know that, right? I think at this point, my body would be in total shock if it knew that a dead animal was going through. <laughs> what's going through it I'm just so sorry so it says carnism hides effects on humans too they don't want humans to know that eating animal products leads to all of those diseases that people are dying from today from heart disease to um, diabetes to you know all of the things that we're having the cancers that all of it is a result of eating the animals. And they don't want us to know that. And it says the reason, that the way that they try and do that is using the three ends of justification. People always justify things. And these are the three ends. One, that it's normal. It's normal to eat meat. Two, that it's natural. Humans have been doing it forever. And three, that it's necessary. How else will you get your protein? So normal, natural, and necessary. And of course, carnyism fogs our mind by confusing us over dogs versus pigs. They objectify the animals by saying they're just farm animals. They're not real. You know, they're only being raised for food. What is the problem? Um, as if they don't have a personality or a desire or a will to live, right? And then finally, the hope in all of this is that when humans are informed, they're generally pissed off. <laughs> they're upset that they have been bamboozled, if you will, this entire time by the industry. I certainly was. Um, so our strength is in justice, truth, and awareness. That the more we know, humans still love animals. They want justice, and they want to know the truth. And that awareness demands change. I'm game for all of that. I'm going to keep doing uh, some different videos on this because, again, I was on the planet for a really long time and for 52 years of it, I was eating animals. Not a lot, not as much as many, because I just didn't favor meat in general for most of my life, but I favored the cheaper meat. I like a hot dog over a steak. 
I'd like a hamburger over a pork chop. Uh, but I've had all the meats, seriously. I, I ate liver as a little girl, we were forced to. I ate uh, lamb, I certainly had ham, um, all of those things, you know. I, I'm, I'm just sorry and I'm just trying to find my way. So I hope that interests you. The secret reasons we eat meat is because it's been put on us. We arrived with it all in motion from our first breath that even our baby food has meat and that we were expected to eat it. Absolutely expected to eat it. If I said, I don't want any, please. Oh my gosh. You can't waste a good piece of meat. Do you know how expensive meat is? You have to eat it like all of that. All right. Peace be with you, my friends. Peace be with the animals. God bless the ill-informed and double bless those who are informed and are choosing not to change. Until we talk again, my friends, like if you like, join us if you haven't, subscribe. If you ever have a topic you'd like me to look into, I would love to. Let me know in the comments below. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow as we continue our 45-week quest to the best version of ourselves and our 100-day challenge of raw and rebounding. And until we talk again, best of all, Trust that you're blessed.